Good evening everybody! Today we're back with another crawl through Guitar Hero Buckethead's monumental Pike album series with Pike 8 Racks. So let's begin. Woo! Released as a trilogy on September 20th, 2012, alongside Pikes 9 and 10, Pike 8 Racks clocks in at just under 30 minutes, making it the shortest Pike album release up to that point. As with most of the early Pike releases, it was one of the only albums to be sold with its original cover art, the instantly memorable Double Shadow Buckethead. Glorious. Rax opens up with the song The Snow Rabbit. Heavy distortion and growls take charge in a song that really finds its footing in the latter half of the track, with two short solid solos and a cool double layered outro. At just under three and a half minutes, it's a good opener. <laughs> Track 2, Telekinite, really picks up the tempo with heavy riffage that doesn't slow down for any of its 3 minute duration. An enjoyable track that probably would have been better as the album's opener, but still, it's one of the better tracks on the album. Good stuff. Track 3, Asbury Park Boardwalk, slows things down with Buckethead in chill mode, evoking images of lazy days at the beach. Its placement on the album is somewhat out of place given the direction of the rest of the tracks before and after, but it's never a bad thing to change things up, and Asbury Park Boardwalk certainly does that. Next, the castle of Dr. Cadaver. Buckethead has left the boardwalk and is back to the heavy with cool riffage and some bass synth growls complemented by its slow looming drum beats. The song starts off promising but does slightly lose its way towards the latter part of the track before picking back up again for the outro. <laughs> From Dr. Cadaver's castle, we go to track 5, Sunbursts. This is where Buckethead really shines. Mesmerizing tone, masterful handling of the guitar that's packed full of emotion. Even after 8 years and over 260 pikes since its release, Sunburst remains one of my all-time favorite Buckethead tracks, with one of my favorite solos that he's ever produced. Simple yet effective, 5 stars all day, every day. Track 6, Chamber of Slunks, opens with a cool marching style riff that breaks off into more heavy metal riffage. Unfortunately, it's the shortest track on the album at 1 minute and 18 seconds and is crying out to go longer, especially with its head banging outro picking up the pace. Track 7, Spiderwall, is the second shortest track on the album, and although it does muster up images of spiders crawling up the walls, it's certainly not a track you'll have on repeat, or one that you'll remember by the album's end. Track 8, Coffin for a Penny, is a slow, feel-good song in the same vein as the previous Asbury Park Boardwalk, although I enjoyed this one a lot more and could have easily listened to it for another few minutes. Next 
next up, Track 9 Formal House. Named after one of the brightest stars in the sky, this is Buckethead in heavy experimental mode with those notorious guitar pops and crazy shred licks. Definitely not one for everybody, but if you like this side of Buckethead, binge away. The album concludes with track 10, The Patrolman. And just like track 5, Sunburst, this is the Buckethead we came to listen to. An outstanding 7.5 minute crawl that flies by in no time. The Patrolman is one of the few Pike songs that Buckethead has actually played live, so clearly he loves it just as much as we do. And boy do we love it. 5 stars. Pike 8 is an album of peaks and valleys. I don't feel it flows as well as some of Buckethead's previous Pikes, but when it hits its high points like Telekanite, Sunburst and the Patrolman, it really is a joy to listen to. After adding up the rating I gave for each track, it came to 61%, which I categorize as good and mid-tier Pike album release. So what's your rating for Pike 8? To work out what percentage you give the album, rate each song out of 5 stars, add up your total and divide it by the total score possible, which for Pike 8 is 50, then times it by 100. Yeah.